Okay. So, hi, my name is Sam Harlow, and I am the online learning librarian for UNCG University Libraries. UNCG Libraries came up with the idea to create a series of webinars for the UNCG community on research and applications. Welcome. In this series, different librarians will cover topics on UNCG Libraries resources and research tools. These 30-minute webinars will be recorded in WebEx meetings where we are now and placed on the library webpage through YouTube, where they will be eventually closed captioned and have participant data. Um, so here is the link of where it will live, and you will also get an email um, of the recording afterwards. I'm going to cover some logistical things about how this webinar is going to run. Please mute yourself, your audio, during the presentation by clicking the audio icon next to your name to turn it red. It's a little mic icon. Um, but feel free to turn your audio back on by clicking that same audio icon again at the end of the webinar to participate in a conversation. If you do not have a microphone, you are also welcome to participate in the chat. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please put them in chat. I will track the questions while um, Amy, the presenter, presents the materials. If there are technical issues, you can call me or email me. I'm going to put that information in the chat right now. And um, I will guide you through some solutions. So worst case scenario, please remember that this session is being recorded. So does anyone have any questions before we start? So this session is being hosted by Amy, Head of Libraries Research, Outreach, and Instruction Department, as well as Educational Librarian for UNCG Libraries. Amy is presenting on SAGE Research Methods, a database of resources on research methodology. So are you ready, Amy? I'm totally ready. Okay. Okay. So yes, I'm Amy. I'm the Education Librarian, Head of Research, Outreach, and Instruction, which Sam just said. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you about SAGE research methods. I am a huge fan of this database, um, but sometimes people don't know about it because it doesn't belong to a discipline. So a lot of the databases that we have are, you know, education databases, music databases, nursing databases, but this one kind of belongs to, to everyone um, because it doesn't have discipline specific material. It doesn't have articles on a topic or anything like that. It's a very different Thing. Um, so I just want to provide an introduction so that hopefully people will get to know this database because I think it's really powerful for um, graduate students and faculty who are uh, doing research, which is many of us. So um, I'm on the library's homepage currently. Hopefully you can see my screen right now. Um, and so to get there uh, from the library's homepage, we're going to click on the word databases. And like I said, it's called SAGE Research Methods, so it starts with an S. So we're going to go to SAGE, S for SAGE, and we're going to scroll down. So I will also point out that many of our subject-specific research guides will have this linked on it because um, the subject librarians, like me, know the value of this database. But if you ever just want to get to it quickly, this is a really good way to do so. So here at SAGE Research Methods. And when I click on it, as with many databases, I am presented with a search box. And so, of course, as Google has trained us very well, we um, feel compelled to go and type words in the search box. So again, unlike most of our other databases, this is not a place where you type a topic or something like that. In this search box, we are going to type a research methodology. So I'm just going to type in ethnography. That is a research methodology. Um, so I'm going to, I just chose that one. And I can see it's giving me results and it immediately provides me with a short definition of what an ethnography is. And then under that, I've got some results from um, handbooks. We've got from dictionaries and encyclopedias, um, book chapters. And I'm just, actually, this looks like it's an entire book about ethnography. Um, so, you know, so here if, you know, if somebody says to me, this, you know, this research project that you're thinking about, ethnography might be a great, a great fit, a great methodology for you. You can come in and just start reading. Um, and there are ways to narrow it down. So you can come over here on the right and narrow to a specific type of content. So let's say, um, for example, you're reading an article and, you know, you, you come across, you know, the, 
the researchers have used some sort of methodology that you're not familiar with, you can come in here and just say, you know what, I just need a quick, a quick introduction. I just need to know what this is enough to continue reading this article. So here we go. I chose dictionary so I can click on the title of one of these entries and get a brief, well, okay, no, not a brief, a somewhat brief description of what ethnography is. You can also, you know, if you need more in-depth information, you can limit to a book or something similar. So there's lots of different types. You can also narrow by discipline if you want to see how a particular research methodology is used in your discipline. You can do that. So let's see. I went back and made sure I was looking at all the different content types. So I'm going to choose I'm going to choose education. And of course, not all discipline types are used for all method or they're not available for all the methodologies, but you can always find a um, you know, maybe a similar one. If you're in a humanity, you could find a different humanities discipline and see what you can find or um, some sort of, you know, related discipline. So in this case, here's a book called Ethnography and Education. So um, that book would probably be an excellent choice if I want to learn more about ethnography and education specifically. So um, that's a really nice thing to be able to do. So in addition to just being able to get kind of that basic information, you can get more in-depth information that is more discipline specific. Let's see, you can also limit to, let's see, what else do we want to limit to? There's all sorts of things. Um, one other thing that I'll just point out, so I talked a little bit about um, the books and, and articles and things, but there are videos in here as well. So you can find videos, um, but I'll also show you how to browse those as well. So I'm going to go to back to the beginning. And, and by the way, all that is full text. So everything that, that was just showing up in that results list, I'm going to be able to get to the full text in here. So that's another thing that's really nice about this database is that it doesn't send you out to 15 other places. Um, everything is pretty much contained within Sage Research Methods. So let's see, there's a section. So underneath the search bar, um, if you want to do a little bit more browsing, perhaps, you can come down here and see the different types of resources. So these are the ones that we mentioned that I mentioned earlier. Um, but let's say I really want to see a video. So I'm clicking on this. So now I'm in this kind of video sub collection. So I can come in here again. Type in ethnography. And there's different, you know, you can, you'll get to the same place. Lots of different ways. It just depends on how you how you choose to search. So here I can see what is sensory ethnography, ethnographic video, filmmaking and academia. That sounds like it might be interesting. And let's see, I'm just going to click on that one. It does provide a transcript. You can download the transcript. Um, you can see, you know, an abstract. So there's lots of lots of information here that you can use. Um, you can also share things. There's an embed code here. If you're teaching a class maybe in research methodology, you can embed these videos um, or you can just share, send a link to somebody um, or you can use that, you know, you can use that to send information to yourself. So um, the video collection I think is really, is very cool. I like that a lot. And again, let's see. Go back one more time. There we go. Nope, one more time. So um, one other thing that I'll point out, I think these are maybe helpful, maybe more helpful to graduate students, is that there's a set of, of handbooks called the Little Green Books and the Little Blue Books. And they're basically just little handbooks to different research methodologies. So um, you know, professors may say, you need to look at the little green book or the little blue book. And so you can come in here and find those books. So you just click on that and then you can read, again, you can read the full text of all these different handbooks. So, you know, I know very little about time series analysis, but if I click on this, I can certainly learn about it from this little green book. And you can see here the chapters, um, I can search within this book. I can 
go to a particular chapter and just start reading. Um, so um, yes, so these are the, like I said, the little green books and the little blue books, which are another kind of introductory tool for learning a new research methodology. So a new part of SAGE research methods, or it's relatively new for us, well, there's actually the next two things are relatively new. So even if you've used it before, you may not be familiar with this. Um, there's a, a section here that says practice data analysis. And I think this is really neat because it gives you the, it actually provides data sets for you that you can download and play with. You know, if you're trying to learn how to use the statistical software, maybe you're trying to learn to use SPSS or um, something like that, you can actually go in and say, okay, I'm interested, I'm doing some letters. Okay, I can click on letters and see what's happening in here. And then I can actually, oh, it's archival research. That's really cool. So this is somebody's sample data set and you can download this and then figure out, you know, how how you can work with it. And this, you know, you're not you're not going to break this, which I think is really nice. Um, so let's see. I'm going to pick a quantitative one because uh, survey data. That sounds like something that we that we all have to deal with probably at some point. So I'm going to pick. I'm going to learn about ANCOVA. So I can see, you know, I've got all the different ways to download it. I can use it with Stata or R, SPSS. Um, there's a com comma separated file, an Excel file. They give you the code book. So all the information that you would need to go in and just you know download the data, put it in your favorite statistical or new favorite statistical software, and then just you know see what you can do with it. So I think that's a nice tool to have because um, you know, you might need to just have some hands-on practice using data, and I think that this can be a very helpful tool for that. Let's see. Um, there's there's a lot of things here. Um, like I said, sort of the opposite of what I did at the beginning. If you don't have a particular research methodology in mind, but you want to see what um, you know what's out there in your discipline, you can do that here. Um, you know, it's pretty heavily social science and science focused, but hopefully maybe there's something useful in here for everyone. Um, so yeah, you can just come in here and see, oh, what kind of education resources or what kind of methodologies do they have for education? Now this methods map, I'm gonna be really honest and say that this is not how my brain works, but if your brain works this way, then this is really cool. It's a good way to see um, relationships between terms. You can see, okay, research methods, that's our big topic. So I'm going to look at qualitative data analysis. So it's just going to let me break it down. How do I want to break it down? Do I want to do conversation analysis? So it's going to help me keep narrowing down and it's giving me definitions as I go. So with every step that I take, it's going to give me a definition which I think is, is pretty cool. Um, like I said, my brain doesn't really work this way, but I know for a lot of people it does. So now I've kind of narrowed myself down to transcription and there are no more narrower terms, but there's some kind of related broader terms. So, you know, may, maybe I really want to look at oral history research. So you can just kind of follow this all, all around. Um, and it gives you a little history of how you got to where you are. So, and you can see related terms and, um, so it's, I don't know, it's a neat tool if you just want to think about um, the type of research that you want to do or the type of the research that you're doing in, in just a more, more graphic way. So anyway, that's called the methods map. So again, all of these things that we're getting to is from the main page of Sage Research Methods. So we, we searched up at the top here. We talked about video. We talked about little green books, little blue books, talked about data sets. Now, the last thing that I want to talk about is another relatively new piece to Sage Research Methods. It's called the Project Planner, and I do think this is really neat. I haven't actually used it for a project yet, but I think that it's a really cool idea, and I actually want to use it for my next research project. So this just kind of walks you through the process of 
designing a research project. And um, so you can see the sides or over here on the left is all the, the steps that they go through. And, um, you know, this starts at the very beginning, the very beginning. Why do research? Um, so, you know, we've got some things here. We've got some, you know, kind of subsections here, very basic stuff. You know, you can go through and read all of these things, things to think about before you start your research. Here's a checklist. It's very nice, just things to can. Sorry, I don't know if you heard that, but Siri just thought I was talking to her. I was not. Okay, so then I can move on to the next stage. This is where I define my topic. Um, you know, here's how I can decide what to study, how to identify a research topic. So it's really just walking you through from the very beginning of how, you know, things to consider as you work your way through a research project. The literature review, surprisingly, even though I'm a librarian, this is not my favorite part of the process. It should be, but it's not. Um, how do I do a literature search? How to do a literature review. So this, I think, is really helpful for new researchers. Um, of course, if you're a, an experienced researcher and you, you know, you do a lot of research, these steps may be second nature to you. But if you're working with a new researcher, maybe a graduate student, um, they may benefit from seeing these steps laid out in this manner. So you know, this could be a helpful resource for students just to say, you know, take a look at this, make sure that you're considering this, walk through these steps, and all that. So I think that this is a really um, helpful, helpful tool for that. Um, like I said, section on developing a researchable question. Um, you can see where all this information comes from. And um, anyway, so it's going to get you all the way through to writing up, of course, is the thing that we have to do. And then dissemination, so how to get it, you know, what are the different ways that you can get your research out there? Um, you know, how do you write a book? How do I publish a journal article? How do I disseminate my research online? How do I present at a conference? So, you know, this, even if you don't use the whole thing, I think especially this part at the end is especially helpful because, um, you know, sometimes having an idea for a research project is, is one thing, but then having, trying to figure out, you know, where you should publish it or what the different, you know, what are there other options besides just, you know, trying to get it published in a journal, um, raising public awareness of your research. So there's, I think there's a lot of really interesting things in here. So I just think this project planner is really cool. Um, like I said, my brain does not work in the methods map way, but I think it works in this like checklist sort of format. I like having like, okay, I did this step. What's the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. So um, I think this is cool and it takes a project, a process that can be very confusing and makes it maybe less so. Um, and of course, I realize in real life that research is not a linear process, but um, seeing it laid out in this way, I find to be very helpful. So, Wow. Okay. So just to recap again, we talked about all the different ways to get to information. You can search for a research methodology. You can click on one of these things if you have a particular medium in mind, like video or podcast. By the way, there are podcasts because everybody has a podcast. Um, you can practice with the data sets. You can work through this project planner. You can search by discipline. You can play with the methods map. Um, there's there's a lot. There's a lot in here, and I think that it's a very helpful tool. Like I said, if you work with graduate students at all, or if you are a graduate student, this is a really good database to just become familiar with, so that um, that you can you know learn more about doing research and also about particular research methodologies. So. That was only 23 minutes. So does anybody have any questions? I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a moment. So Amy, as you were talking, I did do some link sharing. So the stuff. Um, so if anyone has any questions, this is a good time. Um, as people are thinking of their questions, I will say, I don't know, Amy, if you have had this issue. 
<coughs> sorry, but it is good to work with your library liaison um, because uh, the links sometimes need to be like lib proxied. I work with the kinesiology EDD program um, and we have to do that. But yeah, so that's just a good plug to to talk to your um, liaison about linking to this stuff or downloading the PDF or um, whatever is easiest for you. Yes. Yeah, I agree with you 100% that yes, we there is a certain because this is a um, a database that we subscribe to, um, you know, if you click on it from off campus, it will ask you to log in. So sometimes if we provide internal links to things that are inside this database, it doesn't it doesn't do that for you automatically. So yes, that is an important thing to to be aware of. Um, you can always, you know, send yourself a link and then try it from off campus and see if it works. And yeah, if it doesn't, please just talk to your librarian or um, you can talk to, you know, you can use the chat service, the Ask Us chat to see if, um, you know, see how we can make it so that you can get students directly into a book or an article or whatever um, it is that you are looking for. Cool. So, so far there's not any questions. Um, you can let us know um, if you guys have any questions. Amy, was there anything else you want to share? As I'm pulling up the webinar page. I'm actually checking right now because I didn't check this before, so I'm glad that you mentioned that to see what kind of link comes in through the email function. So I'll, I'll tell you. Let's see. Yeah, like I said, just with that EDD program, sometimes like I'll add the proxy in front of it. Mm -hmm. And that be something that they fix. You know what I mean? Creating a like permalink button. Right. Um, because they are constantly improving and adding stuff, and it's definitely one of my favorite tools to use um, about research methodology. Yes. So, but yeah, please, um, yeah, if you have questions, um, all all the librarians, um, all the li all the library liaisons know how to use this. So, if you have questions about using it, again, feel free to contact your librarian or to use the Ask Us chat and. Um, and we will help you figure it out. But yeah, I hope that you will use this resource because I think it's really cool. And um, like I said, I think it's particularly helpful to graduate students and newer researchers. But of course, we can always learn more. So. And we're also trialing out that Wiley, right? Or is that a trial? The Wiley Researcher Academy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we are. So that. Um, I still the presenter. I'll link on. to it in the in the chat if you want to play around with it. Yeah. So just real quick, um, the sorry, I share my screen again real fast just so I can show you. So Wiley Research Academy is um, again, yeah, it's a trial that we're doing right now. It is sort of like the project planner, except more. <laughs> it's more more than a project planner. It. Um, it starts with a W, so it's in W in the A to Z database list. And I forgot my username and password, so I'm not going to show you right now. Sorry, that was a that was a bust. I definitely have one, but I don't know what it is. But yes, it's 14 modules. Um, it, it walks people through the pro the process. They can track their own progress through the modules, which is a, an interesting thing. So that would be more like if you were a professor teaching graduate students and you wanted them to complete modules, they you can have them do that. Um, and then you can track, you know, which modules they've actually completed. There are little quizzes in there, so it's it's much more interactive. There are videos and things like that, um, but it is it is more in depth um, than the project planner in Sage Research Methods. That's all I know about it. Yeah, Beth Bernhardt is an expert. In. I was also trying to log in on the back end, um, but I forgot mine. Um, the modules <laughs> or the courses, because it's a little bit different than Sage Research Methods, include, um, they're a little bit more scientific, I think like Amy said, and qualities of, of a successful scientific researcher, research and publication, the essential link, funding the research project, selecting the appropriate journal, best practices in writing scientific articles, key components of a research article, manuscript submission, peer review, open access to scientific literature, managing research data, ethical questions in writing scientific papers, roles of the publisher and journal editors, <laughs> post-publication activities and driving visibility, becoming a peer reviewer. 
There you go. It's a lot of stuff. It's, very, wow. it's, it's really good stuff, but it's, it is very much more in-depth than, um, than the project planner. Yeah. So it depends on what you need. Thank you, Amy. Um, so the next one coming up, ooh, sorry, in this webinar series is in February. I'm sorry, I'm trying to pull it up. Um, on um, Digitalia, eBooks and streaming films. Um, so it's um, a lot of Spanish language resources, but it also goes beyond that as well. Um, so a lot of language stuff. Um, but it's also um, cool to be talking about streaming film. If you're interested in that, um, our head of technical services will be there, Christine um, Fisher, to talk about it. Um, and then the next one on the other series that we do on online learning and innovation is February 12th. And it's embedding Google Slides and Canvas. So feel free to sign up for either one. They're both on this um, webinars page, which I'm about to throw in the chat. But are there any final questions before we sign off? Great. Well, thank you, and um, I hope everyone's having a great first week of school. Hopefully it's not too crazy, and um, we hope to see you in other uh, virtual webinars or in person, and uh, have a great week. Thanks, Amy. Thank you.